Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, FPL Consult here and in today's video we have my Game Week 11 transfer plans where I review Game Week 10, share a bit of my early thoughts after the weekend's games and also look ahead into Game Week 11, share what I intend to do with my team before the Game Week 11 deadline. So if you guys do enjoy this one, please do drop a like, please do subscribe as well. We are still running a charity drive, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and I will be donating more money to Mindset Charity which is a mental health charity, something that we are donating to and contributing towards as well. So if you want to contribute, all you have to do is hit the subscribe button. Now, for game week 10, let's talk about how I did first before we look ahead into game week 11. It was an incredible game week for my team. And in fact, it hasn't ended yet. I still have three players to go, Palmer, Mbumo and Flecken. I think most people have Mbumo and Palmer, so my rank wouldn't change too much. If somehow Flecken keeps a clean sheet, then maybe I could break into the top 100k. But either ways, as it stands, I am recording this before the Manchester United and Chelsea game. As it stands, I'm very happy with how my team has done so far. A big green arrow to 121k in the world, so we are inching closer and closer into the top 100k. And I think this week, I have to admit, I got pretty fortunate. So we'll break down the scores. Flecken hasn't played yet, so we'll speak about him in the team selection video later on in the week. Hopefully, he keeps a clean sheet against Fulham, but I honestly think it is quite unlikely. That said, in defence, it's Trent, Gabriel and Aena. So obviously, the star of this defence is Ola Aena. He delivered with a clean sheet, three bonus points and a goal, of course, which was an absolute thunderbolt into the back of the net. I think that was one of the best goals I've seen um, in the Premier League so far this season. And I'm pretty happy that I have Aena in my team. And to be fair, when I look at my team overall and I can compare it to the Salah, um, kind of drafts that a lot of people have at the moment, Aena was really the one that helped me to cover Salah's points because those who had Salah, he got 9 points and they captained him as well. So overall getting 18 points from Salah, Aena alone with his 15 pointer was able to kind of shield me and give me enough points to cover off the fact that maybe other people have Salah as well. So Really, really pleased with Aena, but moving forward, fixtures do start to get tricky. So I may look to ship him on, but maybe not in Game Week 11. We'll speak about Game Week 11 later on, but I do have plans in the future that he's someone that will have to leave my team. But this is a very nice parting gift. Now, Trent and Gabriel. Gabriel, Arsenal still look very disappointing in defence, but them conceding a goal against Newcastle away is not the worst thing in the world. Despite them looking pretty poor defensively, I still think moving forward from game week 12 onwards, that is when we would want Arsenal defenders. So I'm not panicking too much about Gabriel so far. For Trent, this is the one where I think I, it's a little bit of a sunk cost fallacy. I think I've held on to him long enough now that I will probably give him up until the Southampton game that Liverpool have in game week 12. That is also in, when I intend to bring Salah into my team, but again, I'll speak about that later on. But I think I might just give Trent the next two game weeks. Hopefully, he delivers something. But I'll be honest, he is a pick at the price point he's at that has been quite disappointing. I don't think he justifies the 7 million or 7.1 million price tag given the role that he's playing currently and also his attacking threat has just gone down quite tremendously. So hopefully these last two game weeks he manages to get something. I'd be happy even with just a clean sheet or two and no attacking returns. But after that, I think he's someone that would leave my team. In midfield, Mbomo and Palmer haven't played yet, so we'll cover them later on in the team selection video. Johnson and Rogers, I am recording this just after the Tottenham versus Aston Villa game. Very, very pleased that I held on to both of them, despite them kind of blanking in the past few game weeks. Johnson returning with a goal, and Rogers as well with Villa's only goal of the match. Now, obviously, there are kind of other learnings from that game in that Son was taken off early. So I think moving forward into game week 11, there may be a bit of doubt as to those of you who are holding on to Son. Do you want to really captain him if he's someone that they are managing his minutes? They're very obviously taking him off early to kind of protect him. And, you know, with his hamstring injury, it is something that they have to be careful with. So given that's the case, I might be a little bit uh, skeptical of captaining Son if it was in game week 11. But that said, I think for my own team, I have Johnson and Rogers, 8 points and 9 points respectively. A couple bonus between them as well. On Rogers. He was substituted quite early simply because he picked up a bit of a knock. But when he came off, he was kind of trying to jog it off. I was watching the match and I could visibly see that he was trying to kind of run off the injury. But that said, he was substituted off still for John Duran. 
And after that, he did kind of display a bit of displeasure in that, you know, he was not happy he was being taken off. So it points to me that maybe he was fine and moving forward, he could still be someone that I keep in my team for, you know, Villa's turn of fixtures later down the line. But either ways, at kind of the price point he's at, I'm pretty happy for him to be an enabler in my team still. It's just a case where I think he does take up a bit of a midfield spot. So it's one of those where maybe I keep him still, no real urgency to sell. But I think because a lot of people are shifting towards premium midfielders now, I think I may want to do that as well. Rogers could be someone that leaves. So we'll see about that. In the forward positions, it's Cunha, Haaland, and Chris Wood. So honestly speaking... Everyone has returned my attack so far, except Harlan. but obviously I wasn't going to captain anyone else other than Erling Haaland, who did have a couple of big chances, but unfortunately he did not manage to return. I think he had three big chances in that game against Bournemouth, so even one where I think he hit the post from literally, I think, a couple of steps out, so really unlucky there. But when I compare those Salah squads as well, I'm speaking a lot about Salah because there was a big discussion in game week 10 before the deadline whether people would sell Haaland for Salah. That obviously has worked out quite well. But I think looking at it from this perspective where I now have Haaland still, I probably won't move for Salah in game week 11. I think I will hold off a little bit, give Haaland the Brighton game, and then move for Salah before he plays Southampton in game week 12. So I'll speak about that later on again. But yeah, Haaland's still in the squad. Disappointing. I think the fact that Kevin De Bruyne is in the squad could be a good sign that, you know, hopefully he plays the Brighton game, which is when I will still have Haaland in my team. But I think long term, I look at Haaland's fixtures, I probably won't want to captain him. So he's someone whose days could be numbered in my team. Aside from that, Cunha brought him in for Harvard's uh, six-pointer immediately. He's someone that I think is going to be a set and forget in my team. So very happy that he's returned right from the get-go. He did also create lots of big chances for Sarabia, who obviously missed a couple of sitters as well so on another day Cunha could have gotten more but he's just someone that is going to be a set and forget for me Chris Wood continues to deliver the man is just incredible like week in week out he continues to pop off with a goal or two so I think at this point real no real rush to sell him even I think I'll give him up till the Ipswich game and thereafter once Nottingham Forest fixtures start to turn a little bit despite them doing very well I do think like with the run of fixtures that they have after the Ipswich game, it does get quite tricky, so I might move him on. So for now, uh, this is my starting 11. This is how I scored so far. I will cover this squad again and overall how I did. But on the bench, I just want to speak about Semenyo here. He got 10 points against Man City. I had a feeling that he was going to return. I had a feeling as well that Bournemouth are going to do quite well against City. But that said, it was very hard for me to kind of, you know, start some menu ahead of any of these players here. So again, the trend continues that I will be, uh, I, that I have bench points on my team every single week. It does not feel good, but at the end of the day, it just points to me that it's very kind of um, you know, encouraging that the bench players are doing well. So that come game week 11, where I will start some menu instead of Morgan Rogers who plays Liverpool then, you know, he'll be ready to come in in good form as well. So there we go with my Game Week 10 team uh, and the scores. Let me know how you guys got on in the comments down below. I imagine that a couple of you guys still held on to Solanke. If that was the case and you had Salah captain as well, you probably did very well. So I'd be keen to know all your scores in the comments down below. Let me know and let's have a look at my Game Week 11 team. So for game week 11, this is my team without any transfers made so far. I have 2.3 million in the bank and I have one free transfer. Now the main issue with my team in game week 11 are the defensive fixtures. So Trent has Aston Villa at home, Rico Lewis has Brighton away, Gabriel has Chelsea away and on the bench, Aena has Newcastle at home. So pretty much difficult fixtures for all of them and if I'm to use my one free transfer in game week 11, it would likely be to replace one of these defenders. So narrowing it down to which which one I'm likely to replace. Trent will have Southampton in game week 12 and if I've kept him all this way already, I might as well give him the Southampton game in game week 12 before shipping him out of my team. I also imagine that a lot of people don't have Trent at this point. They have probably moved him out so that they can have more money for the midfield where a lot of people are going heavy in midfield with the premiums now. 
I do have, I guess, a little bit cheaper of a midfield, and I have Trent here. So come game week 12, he will be quite a big differential, so I don't mind holding on to him for a while more. So I don't think I'll be selling Trent if I do make a defensive transfer. Gabriel is also not someone I will transfer out, even though Arsenal are not looking very good defensively. I still do think like from game week 12 onwards, I don't mind holding on to Gabriel. So it comes down to Lewis and Aina. And Aina obviously coming off a 15-pointer in uh, game week 10. So it could be a bit crazy for me to sell Aina, but the fixtures moving forward do start to get quite tricky. But something else about Aena is that he will have, similar to Chris Wood, he will have the Ipswich game coming up soon enough. So I don't mind just having him as a bit of a bench option as well. So the plan, if I am to use my one free transfer, is likely to replace Rico Lewis for someone like Aid Nuri. So I'll speak about that in the next section. But defensively, if I do make a move, then probably Lewis leaves the team. If not, the rest of my team, I feel, looks fine. So in the event I decide to roll as well, which is a very... You know, high possibility as well because come game week 12, if I have two free transfers, I can potentially look to bring Salah into my team, sell Haaland, and then remove Johnson in game week 12 for Salah. So I do think like these different moves are on my mind, and that's why if I do save this one free transfer, it opens up the possibilities for those kind of moves. So I do think like at this point in game week 11 as I'm recording, it is quite uncertain which way I would swing. It would also largely depend on any news that we get later on in the week. But if not at this point, the rest of my team, Bournemouth for Flecken, I don't think Flecken will keep a clean sheet and I also have Semenyo, so I'm perfectly fine if Bournemouth go ahead and smash Brentford. Hopefully Semenyo gets something there. In fact, I am quite confident that Semenyo, who is in good form at this point, and Flecken conceding loads of goals um, of late, I do think like Semenyo could get something. Aside from that, Bournemouth and Ipswich for Mbumo and Johnson respectively. Palmer has Arsenal at home, but I'm never benching him. And then up front, it's Cunha with Southampton, Haaland with Brighton away, and Chris Wood with Newcastle at home. So I'm happy enough with the rest of my team. And really, if I do make a transfer, then it would likely be for a defender. So let's have a look now at the transfer tinkering section to show you guys what I plan to do with my team. And also, if I do roll the transfer, then what possibilities it opens up in game week 12. So for game week 11, if I do make a defensive transfer to shore up my defense, Rico Lewis is the one that I'm looking to sell. And I would likely be bringing 8 Nuri in if I do make the transfer. Wolves fixtures moving forward are really good. But I'm not going to kind of cycle myself into thinking that they're going to get a lot of clean sheets. Because looking at the way they've defended so far, I'm not very convinced of the Wolves defense. I'm more convinced of 8 Nuri getting attacking returns. But that said as well, he is on 4 yellow cards. So it is looming at the back of my mind about whether I should just wait until he gets that 5th yellow and then move for him after the suspension. But obviously, with this kind of thinking, I could potentially be missing out on all the points that he will get leading up to the time he gets the fifth yellow. So just something I'm thinking about, but also something that could push me to just saving the transfer and maybe giving him a bit more time to get the fifth yellow and get a suspension before moving for him. So if I do just delay that move a little bit and I keep Rico Lewis, which also, I mean, isn't the end of the world, I don't mind playing my defenders this week if I really have to and then roll my one free transfer in game week 11 onto game week 12 and this is when I think two free transfers will be very handy to sell Erling Haaland as well as Brennan Johnson and move for Mo Salah. So I know a lot of people moved for Salah in game week 10 for Brighton. That worked out really well for those who sold Haaland to get Salah. That obviously seems like a really good move in hindsight now but I still think come game week 12 making this move is still not too late simply because from game week 12 onwards uh, Man City will have Tottenham, Liverpool, Forest, Palace, United and Aston Villa. I think I look at those fixtures and there's not a lot of um, fixtures that I will be captaining Haaland in so I still think selling Haaland in game week 12 as I've said in my previous transfer plans video is the plan for me. So I'll be holding him in game week 11 against Brighton and I'll be captaining him most likely. And then come game week 12 with two free transfers, if I do roll my transfer in game week 11, I will be able to sell Erling Haaland and also sell Brennan Johnson and move for Mo Salah, which is also the week that he will have Southampton away. So he's a huge captaincy shout this week. And then in terms of replacements for Erling Haaland, I will have 11.2 million in the bank. 
lots of money and I think there will be a lot of options popping up from Game Week 12 like the Brighton forwards, Welbeck, Jao Pedro all could become options but Nicholas Jackson is a player with the amount of money I have in the bank, 11.2, that I think I can move for, for a bit of a differential, but also at a time where the fixtures start to look quite good for Chelsea, because from game week 12 onwards, it's Leicester, Aston Villa, Southampton, Spurs, Brentford, Everton. So long run wise, I do like the look of Nicholas Jackson. My impression on, of him is also changing a bit slightly when I look at this season and the number of chances he's picked up, the returns he's been scoring, I do think like he's going a bit under the radar. So I think moving for Jackson in game week 12 for Haaland is likely one of the moves that I'm eyeing up. And say, for example, I confirm these moves, I will have 3.3 million in the bank. The point is also to just move for Brighton assets sooner rather than later because I do like the Brighton attack. I also do like the rate, the rate of returns that Welbeck is performing at. So I do think like after the Ipswich game for Chris Wood, which is in game week 13, then I can look to sell Chris Wood from game week 14, which is the time he will have Man City away, Manchester United away and Aston Villa at home and then move for someone like a Danny Welbeck this week. So if I do make this move, then forward from game week 13, I will have Jackson, Welbeck and Cunha as my front um, attackers, and then Salah in midfield with Palmer and Mbumo. And then with this money in the bank, 3.7 million, I can look to bring in potentially Saka, for example, um, later down the line if I do sell Trent as well. So I'm not going to go too far forward, but I move back over to game week 11 now, and you do see the value of rolling my transfer in game week 11, and also in the fact that I give Aid Nuri a bit more time to maybe get a yellow card and then move past his suspension so that moving forward I can count on him as someone that I will start week in week out. So let me know what you think of my transfer plans. It's not confirmed by any means. Should I roll or should I make the defensive transfer? What would you do in my position? If not, drop your own dilemmas in the comments as well. I'll be keen to know and I'll try to reply all the comments if possible. If not, I'll catch you guys in more Game Week 11 content coming very soon. Bye-bye.